and welcome to Bible study with Hans and Dan as we finish out the book of Mark. Thank you for joining in with us all along the way and remember our next Bible study is going to start on April the 29th and we need to hear from you some of the ideas that you have for Bible study so let us know what those are and we'll go ahead and get started out in chapter 16 starting off with verse 1 and it says when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you, trembling and bewildered. The women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The disciples and Peter. Right, Peter's right. called out here. Right. Uh, sometimes we need to hear that. Yes. He knows our name. I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's such a great truth in, in almost all the resurrection passages that in some way Peter gets, gets called out. And, um, and I think we all face times in our life where we feel like we've done something that's taken us outside of the ball game if you will with yeah. Jesus and uh, and we need to know Jesus can call us by name mm -hmm. uh, even in that time and and I think in a church like ours we also need to know that Jesus can call our grandchildren our children right. by name sometimes when we feel like right. they've gotten outside of the the realm a little bit um, that Jesus love uh, is uh, is what we need to to experience and I, you, you know, we don't really have this, but what did it mean to Peter when they came and said, hey, he, he, he said, said you your name. Specifically, yeah. He called for you. Yeah. And, and sometimes that's the thing. We need to know that, hey, Jesus still wants to call our right. name. Not right. just that that's he knows it, but that yep. he wants to call our name. Yep. And so we see the women, they're yeah. trembling out of fear, but they're also amazed at yeah. what they're seeing and hearing. Right, right. Yeah. You know, they've only seen one other tomb empty. Right, right. <laughs> and, uh, and Jesus was there for that one. Yeah, yeah. And we, we need to have, uh, and we've talked about this in, in a couple of uh, worship services already, trembling and bewildered, I, I think is such an important part of our mm -hmm. faith life. And uh, I'd love to see a little more trembling and bewilderment. Um, you know, you, again, we've talked about this experience for you and Becky going on the mission field. And uh, I grew up in a home where we uh, were encouraged our drug along to go to uh, commissioning services of missionaries, and I've been to a yeah. few as an adult. And those are always great times of celebration, but, but you can see in the room among the family members who are there watching their family member being commissioned, mm -hmm. and even on the stage, that while they're excited about the journey God's right. calling to, there is some trembling and bewildered yes. parts of that. And I think yes. those are where, that, that's where the great moments of faith happen. Mm -hmm. so, so let's make sure uh, we get there. First and the last words, the good news, the gospel, it's... Yeah, it's not ours. No. It's no. not, they're not it's, our words. It's him. It's, it's his words. <laughs> That's right. That's it. He's not here. Um, and, uh, and life is different. And so I, I think so often we can kind of tend into, uh, we can do something here. And they're just witnesses to what has happened. That's right. And, and That's we need right. to remember that. All right, we're going to keep going in chapter 16, beginning with verse 9. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. And when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. 
Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up to heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. And then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Um, so first of all, you might have a Bible that these words are not included in, they're in a footnote, or you might have a Bible that uh, these words are in italics because they are making the point that our ancient manuscripts, uh, the, most, the most ancient we have, don't, don't have these verses. Um, so we're not going to go well into that in this broadcast. If, if you want to know what we think about that, uh, send us a dessert and we'll talk to you on the phone <laughs> about it. Um, but um, these words are familiar in the, in the context of the Gospels, right? Mm -hmm. All the Gospels right. have a, a great commission moment, if you will. Yeah. And this is kind of what we have for Mark's Gospel as to there is a go into the, all wor the whole world. Mm -hmm. There's also some of that strange language of the snakes and, and the you know, drink poison. The testing. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's, um, uh, you know, that, that was some common language of that right. day. Right. Uh, we, in some cases, have taken that to, to great extremes yeah. in our day. Mm -hmm. um, but we are called to live out the gospel. And we're, we are reminded that the church only lives when it lives within the mission of God. And, um, and if we think about that in the whole of Mark's gospel, who is Jesus, and who's figuring that out? Well, who is Jesus? He, he's the son of the living God. Who's figuring that out? All the people on the outskirts of religion right. are figuring that out in Mark's gospel. Um, and, and the condemnation that, that Jesus, through Mark's gospel, has for the church is that you've long since lost your mission. Mm -hmm. And when you lose your mission, you lose life. Right. Um, and so we, we need to remember that it's only in the context of a mission that any church, including Culpeper Baptist, right. has life because we've done these last two sessions in our sanctuary, and when nobody's in this sanctuary, mm. there's not a lot of life in here, no. right? Just a bunch <laughs> of empty pews and some walls and, and, and some lights. Um, it's a pretty it's, space, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, it's only in the context of mission we have life. And, and so I want to encourage all of us today to think about that in terms of the kind of the experience we're, we're living right now is... Um, how do we find mission in, in a time where we are more restricted from seeing each other? Yeah. So some questions that as we kind of finish uh, the Gospel of Mark, and this is a, a quicker one today, um, where are we trembling and bewildered? And I hope that's not a new question because I've been talking about it the last two sermons. So I'd love to hear some trembling and bewildered uh, uh, statements from you all of what God's doing in your life. And then the second question, where is our church finding life in the mission of God? Um, and, uh, and to me, those are some exciting conversations to be had. And that may look very different today than it did a yeah. few weeks ago. Yeah, it probably better look different today <laughs> as to where we find mission. Um, you know, Hans and I obviously have conversations outside of what we do for these Bible studies. And, and I think... Uh, before all this started, we were trying to think, how does the church um, find mission and hope again in the American context? Right. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, let's not forget that in other places of the world, we've seen revival and renewal in ways that we've not seen in human history. Right. Um, so the, the global church has expanded and is yes. expanding in, in tremendous ways. But we, before this happened, we were thinking, okay, how does that happen in places yeah. like this right and uh and now through this we're, we're looking back at history a little bit and saying okay when other pandemics have happened mm -hmm. when other great crises have happened to society and it has changed society what did the church do and um and our church is in some way a great example we uh we started child development centers uh during the time <laughs> of of the second world war we started a, a senior home uh, during the time where people were very concerned about senior adults. And, mm -hmm. and those two things helped to create 
the new environment right. of, of our culture and in our, our world. And we think about, um, you know, the Civil War time period when, when so many um, Baptist institutions will, were, were started, what we call today the International Mission Board mm -hmm. uh, started in that era. Right. Uh, what we call, uh, you know, uh, Hope Tree Children's Services, universities that we've started, just all the things that, that helped create the new society, if you will, that was called for, that came out of a sense of mission. Right. And so where are we finding our mission today uh, in this context is an important conversation. Throughout history, the church in and after the crisis either comes out and does great things or comes out and just right. doesn't do anything at all. And so, yeah, so out of the crisis of Jesus' death and resurrection, <clears throat> The church didn't explode in growth because that really doesn't happen until no. about 200, 300 A.D. Right. But the church exploded in mission. Right. And, and we need to be that kind of church in our day. Thanks for being a part of 16 weeks, uh, our 16 sessions through the Gospel of Mark. Again, we'll start the next session next Wednesday. And you still have time to tell us what you would like us to study. But thanks for being a part of this study. I'm going to pray for us as we close. God, thank you for calling us to more than what we see in this life. And thank you for calling us for life that is abundant in you. And thank you for the mission you've given us. And Lord, even today, help us to rethink uh, how our lives could be spent in service to you. Lord, thank you for your word and how it encourages us and challenges us for these days. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you next time.